Welcome to Not Starving Artists, the podcast. I'm your host, Brooke Benson, money coach and equity actor. I am your financial cheerleader, here to help you build your financial confidence and have power over your money. The best part, no budgeting or bi-weekly paychecks required. I went from being a broke BFA grad, having weekly panic attacks about money, to a financially confident, wealth-building actor and business owner. Money gets to feel fun, simple, and sexy, and I am going to show you how. Hey everyone, welcome to my brand new podcast series, Inside One-on-One Coaching, where I'm giving you an inside look on what a private money coaching call is actually like, and to show you how much can shift for you from just one single coaching session. These episodes are real one-on-one coaching calls. Some are with current and past clients, and some are people I've never coached before, and everyone has given permission for these calls to be shared with you here. A full one-on-one coaching package is three months long with weekly coaching sessions, unlimited text and voice voice messaging support with me, and access to the full video curriculum from my signature group coaching program, Cashed Up Creatives. One-on-one coaching is for creatives, business owners, and those of you whose brains just have a hard time following traditional money advice. You'll get personalized strategy and support to help you understand your numbers without a spreadsheet, fully fund your savings, invest your first $1,000, spend money guilt-free, and finally build a relationship with money that feels easy and supportive. The investment for this package is $4,000 or three monthly payments of $1,400. You can book a sales call with me to learn more about one-on-one coaching and what that would look like for you you and the link is in the show notes. Let's get to it. Hi, Cameron. Hello. Good morning. Okay. So talk to me, give me any updates. And then what do you want coaching on today? Yes. So some updates that I think are definitely worth celebrating. Um, I found this week just like in normal, like spending uh, opportunities or like opportunity. Yeah. That's how I'm going to phrase it. Having spending opportunities. My, my mindset is pretty consistently shifted from where I previously was like, do I have the money for this? Can I afford this? Is this the smartest way to use my money? I found myself literally saying out loud, like, or saying to myself, is that how I want to use my money? Like, is that going to maximize my joy? Like, is that like, am I going to be excited to use my flex that way? Yes. So it wasn't about like, do I have it? It was like, is that going to make me feel like, like, I'm so glad I did that because mm-hmm. I've, I've learned like with the joy purchases, with the reorganization of money, like ultimately the spending I want to be doing is a spending where I'm like, that felt good to do it. Like, I know I have the money sitting in flex to be spent, mm-hmm. but filtering it through the lens of like, is that going to make me even for little things. Like I got off work and I was like, I'm hungry. And I was like, do you want to order food? Like, or do you want to eat at home? And it had nothing to do with spending the money versus not spending the money. It was just like, 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 are you going to get joy from using the money that way right now? Mm -hmm. Like you're going to eat either way. Mm -hmm. And I was like, honestly, I'd rather wait. Like I know I'm going out with a friend tomorrow. I'd rather like just get whatever I want tomorrow. Like not again, not from a scarcity mindset from a, like, I just will get more joy spending it on a different outing. That's Um, a big deal. That's such a big shift. Yeah. So that is um, really exciting. Also that call um, with Candace took Mm -hmm. literally five minutes. And like, I, uh, I think it's important to flag the things that I was telling myself that I didn't realize I was telling myself where I was like, I'm going to have to tell her I'm leaving. Like, what if she has an attitude? Like things I didn't realize until I was like on the call. Like, you know, you kind of like anticipate like they're going to be difficult. And like, well, why are you leaving? Or, well, and there was none of that. She was like, oh, well, where do you want to go? And I was like, I'm thinking Fidelity, but like there may be a couple of other places. And she was like, oh, that'll be an internal transfer. Like you'll start it on their end. They'll initiate it. Um, it, It won't be super simple. Like, and she was just like, no big deal. That's fine. Amazing. She was like, you don't have any like extra paperwork or anything you'll have to do. So I want to like flag like, okay, I was making up that it was going to be, it felt kind of like leftover from like college BFA days. Like, you know, you schedule those mentor meetings and you're ready for the mentor to be like. Rip you apart. Yeah. Right. Right. And so <laughs> I, like, I feel like I anticipate that in my financial life and like, they don't care. Like these people don't care. 
Right. And it's the shift too of like, you employ them, they don't employ you, right? Like you are the CEO with these people. They don't, they're not the ones in power over you. You've employed them to manage your money. And if you want to make a shift, it that's, that's your decision. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think it was super helpful uh, in the way I was coached previously, where you talked about like going into it with like, this is already the plan. So my verbiage was, I'm leaving, not I'm considering. Do I know exactly like probably getting a bit fidelity but I, I still want to rewatch that video and explore options before I commit to that yeah but it was good to know like no I'm definitively leaving UBS they don't need to know that like I don't exactly know where I'm going anyway yeah and to yeah. clock too that your energy going into that call is probably what created her reaction you showed up with the confidence and energy of i've made my decision which gave her no room to be like well are you sure like this would be a better decision da, 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 da. she was like oh yeah he knows what he wants okay cool yeah, yeah. That's what you're gonna do you created that interaction with those thoughts yeah incredible so good, so good. um yeah so i think those are the like big good things from this week um i'm really like still feeling successful after making the extra 470 dollars from last month but like i really want more and i'm like seeing the ways that i made it last month are not necessarily viable for this month which is it's just a matter of that's how staffing is at my hospitality gig right now and that one-off gig that i had or the $300 is like, you can only do it once. So I, I'm experiencing a little bit of frustration there because I'm like, I don't immediately have a solution for how I'm going to make it. I am daily like letting myself think about it, but uh, nothing feels, nothing is jumping out as like a super strong option immediately. So there's that. But also I really, I just listened to your latest podcast episode to get ready for this call. And I think I need to specifically tie career wants, like artistic career wants to finances because I've been getting really specific this week about financial things that I want, like just for fun. Mm -hmm. I like, I pulled open, pulled up the, um, like an old Excel spreadsheet and just was like, okay, if we're talking maximizing income for like my maximum, what I consider to be like, would be the most lavish, exciting lifestyle. I literally typed up every little thing I want to buy, every little trip I want to take. And I let myself like go onto like the cruise website, the flight website and be like, yes. how much, like how much would it cost? And then I just totaled it up to be like, if I wanted to do all of this in one year, which I don't actually want to take four or five vacations in a year, like, because these are, what I'm looking at are longer vacations, but I'm like, let's say I did. And let, let's say I wanted to buy all of this name brand jewelry that I want. And I wanted to buy, you know, all the little things. And I totaled it up and I was like, this is going to be crazy. And I was like, well, that's only like 20 to 25,000 more than I'm currently making. Now, obviously if I made that, I would also want some of that to, that would, that would mean none of that money was going towards investments and other things that I also want to spend on. But I was like, okay, but like 25 K a year is doable over the course of a couple of years, like, or over a, a longer time span than like next year which I guess it's technically possible but so that was fun but it wasn't tied to like what's running concurrently with it artistically and then also in the event that my artistic life is not financing me the way that I want I'm still trying to figure out what the concurrent career path is that will finance my life when I'm in an artistic season of spending or 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 the words aren't coming to me but like you know what i'm saying like i'm still figuring all these things out i have a desire to figure them out faster but i think i need to let myself tie figure out how i'm tying career to the money because i to me they're they're like uh they exist in separate boxes right now the money is not necessarily tied in with the artistry just because since the pandemic I haven't had a lot of financial, my art has been happening, but not in a way that's significant to my financial life. So they've been mentally separated. Yeah. So let's talk about your creative career and your goals and your art desires. Let's just start there. Let's like ignore the money for a second. Talk to me about what you want for your creative career. Well, I'm really enjoying, um, obviously with the the play that I'm writing in two weeks, we have the workshop for producers. Mm-hmm. 
and I'm in the show. So that is, I, I am loving focusing on writing. Mm-hmm. I'm loving on using writing to generate performance opportunity for myself. I do love acting. I don't know that I love acting enough that I'm going to ever want to be a hustle audition, go to all of the things um, kind of actor, which is fine. So the artistic career that I envision for myself, I imagine myself focusing more on directing and writing and then acting when it either suits me or when I created the opportunity or when it's a project that I'm really all in for. Um, I really, I mean, in my gut, I do think the script is good enough to end up off or on Broadway. It just needs to get in the right people's hands. Like, so big, like big picture artistic career. I mean, I would like to be working on the scale of consistently working off Broadway on Broadway. I'm open to TV and film. It doesn't fill me as much as theater but like I'm not gonna say no if it happened um like I would love to be on like um some sort of episodic tv situation whether it's like a streaming series or on cable I wouldn't care Mm -hmm. um I think I'm still what I'm what I'm realizing is I'm still in a place of it would be great if all of my finances came from my art but I haven't gotten specific about what that means beyond um like just being able to live a comfortable life but I would like I would like my artistic career I don't know when I think of people that I would I would like want to emulate like I really love like how Tracy Letts operates Mm -hmm. because Tracy Letts has kind of lived in all of like he's done theater, but then August Osage was made into a film and then he was in the film. I really, I admire operating in that way or like the way that Lynn has written roles for himself as well. Mm-hmm. Um, when I think of the kind of actor I want to be, I think like Philip Seymour Hoffman, someone who can do really dynamic, really different roles, mm-hmm. but do them fully. I feel like that's how I operate as a performer. Like I may not be right for everything, but when I do something, it's all in. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Cool. So I have two things here. I'm going to say them out loud and flag them and then we'll go one at a time. I want to come back to wanting all of your finances to come from your artistic career. We're going to come back to that. But first, your creative career, right? And where you want to go, right? Like let's let's just use Tracy Letts as like a kind of a north star, right? Like that kind of career. Mm-hmm. Um wanting to be consistently working Broadway, off-Broadway, scripts, directing, acting, kind of doing that, cool roles that feel really in alignment to you and not doing like the hustle audition culture. Okay, so one of the things I heard you say, is that correct? Did I summarize? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. One of the <clears throat> things I heard you say was, I need these scripts in the right hands. How do you get these scripts into the right hands? What's the block right now? Uh, I mean, there's no block. I just, I need to maximize my networking. I know I know people who know people. I just need to get the connection made. Uh, And I feel like there's only, I can only talk to the people I currently know and put myself in situations to meet the new people. Um, And I want to make sure that I'm doing that in the right energy. Of course, I don't want to go into like, pick me girl energy. I don't think that ever uh, in theater, I don't think that the pick me girl uh, energy is what I want to lead with. Um, but what kind of situations are those? Talk to me about the networking situations or like the kind of places you want to put yourself in for those kind of things to happen organically. What does that look like? I mean, in my mind, the ideal would be like, I'm seeing my friend in a show and then they connect me to someone who worked on the show with them at, you know, who is a producer or who was on the production end of things or is on the financing end of things. Like I would, uh, in my head, what I would love is if it was like, we're at the same event, whether that is, I, in my head, it usually hinges on me, just like I'm there to support friends and being introduced as like someone who is like a co-collaborator and on their level artistically um, within their network. And that is like the, that's the connection. Like, oh, this is their friend Cameron, who 
yeah is also creative and is someone who comes highly recommended let me check out his work um but it could look like uh, i'm at a bar and I strike up a conversation with someone who I didn't realize was industry but is it could look like like that is something that I think I'm pretty good at remaining open to as I move throughout my life so I think it could look like a lot of things because I'm pretty vocal about what I bring to the table and me as an artist so I think like I'm pretty good at just like here's the kind of stuff I love what do you love and then as the conversation happens networking can happen pretty organically in a way that's like not forced and is from mutual interest so I don't know that I have like specific like it has to happen a certain way sure I think it could happen a lot of ways yeah so those the let's go to the like first thing you said like these kinds of events or shows that friends are right and it's kind of organically happening that way how many times a month are you at events like that Mm. it's a great question Um, it depends on the season, but I mean, it's probably only right now, it's probably only once or twice a month month, and it's totally contingent on like what everyone else is doing. I don't know that I'm proactively seeking it out, Uh which is worth noting. (laughs) I'm just discovering that right now. So what we're doing here, and let me just like back up, we're following the trail of like where you are and where you want to be. And we're finding where money can be a supporter in that trajectory to tie it. So Mm -hmm. pursuing that more proactively, right? Does that mean that your money can help you buy tickets on the nights that there are talkbacks to shows with people that you really admire? Does it look like, you know... Again, like it can happen a bunch of different ways. You love the organic way, but like, can you go take a workshop with a person, an agent who works with a lot of the creators that you really admire? Um, Is there an agent who has monthly networking meetups for all of their clients that you want to put on a target list and you're going to go do a pay to play moment to get seen in front of them, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Does it look like being able to take a day off of work and take the income hit in order to go to this specific thing that's going to help introduce you? So do you see how we can find little pockets of where money can support you? Absolutely. Absolutely. And in addition, in addition to that too, we can even go a step further. So let's say, right, it's like, oh, well, there just aren't a lot of those events happening or like I am doing all that I can. Maybe you'll get to that point. It's like, okay, how can money then help you put on more of those events for yourself where you invite all of your friends. Right. So like, how are you funding this reading you're currently doing next in a couple of weeks? Oh, it's, I mean, it's just, uh, my co-producer and I were both hospitality. We've just picked up extra shifts. I mean, it's not amazing. It's we're lucky that it's not crazy, crazy expensive, which is good. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's a bartender and I'm a server. So we've just factored that into this month's budgeting. Um, okay. So can we even clock that too, of like your money is directly tied to you being able to put on this reading of a play that you really, really back. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yes, you picked up some extra shifts, but there's also, there is a dollar amount tied to you being able to put that on. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Right. So if we even tie more of those sorts of connections, right. Of like, okay, maybe you want a higher caliber reading in a couple of months after you do this first reading for producers, right? You have a game plan to like do some of the stuff we just talked about to make more connections, be able to invite more people. We're going to get a nicer venue. We're going to be able to provide something extra for people to come in. We're going to have, I don't know, right? You're the Mm -hmm. creative here and this is your project, but what's coming up for you as I say that? I think like I I've that connection to me is well first of all I feel like maybe I wasn't clear I know that that is true and I would love to use my money to amplify my own artistic career in the ways that I'm interested in because I know I'm capable of because I have I when I was living in Houston like I independently produced two shows like I know that 
having more money can allow me to be more of the kind of creative that I want to be. Mm-hmm. But I'd rather not but. And <laughs> I also still feel like I'm so I'm trying to I want to be concise about this. I'm feeling like I it is easy for that desire to turn to putting pressure on myself financially rather than excitement buzzy uh i hear you. i want to make more money like it's easy for me to be excited about money when the results are spending vacations quote unquote like the more capitalistic lifestyle upgrades when it becomes make more money to do more art there is a sense of and i think it's because the desire is actually greater there's a sense of pressure there is a sense of okay well how do we do that as fast as possible because creatively Oh, I'm ready to go. Like if I had access tomorrow, I could get to where I wanted to be so fast. Mm-hmm. So I, that's what's coming up is like, okay, when I link it and I'm like, you want to make more money so that you can do the art that you want to do there. I mean, I literally like feel it in my chest. Like it's like, okay, well, so how are you going to get the money? Go get it. How are you go? Like, what are you, why are you not because of the level that I want the creative things that I know I'm capable of that I know I could make happen yeah. um, and I don't like the feeling of like it feels a little self-flagellating it feels a little like I don't like that pressure on self mm. so the rush of it doesn't feel exciting the rush of it feels like fuck 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 we're running out of time or like we want it now like why than- didn't you already why have you not like lots of like less running out of time and more like you should have done this yesterday why are you not already there Mm -hmm. if you know this to be true then why are you like it's it's like all of the uh not so much starving artist things but like the piece of starving artist mentality that is like uh like take what you can get because then like my my rebuttal my internal rebuttal to why haven't you is like well I've been in hospitality and I do feel like there's only so much money I can make with that because I know that I also to to have built myself into the creative that I am today required a certain amount of time not at work and doing work at home on my pieces on my writing going to these events going to shows you know it's like so I had to stay in a career that I felt could both pay for my lifestyle and pay for my bills and provide me three days off a week minimum to be an artist to even get here but I'm like not satisfied with the results so it's like I understand how we got here and why we're here and where we want to go but I think yeah linking these two there's like the pressure and then also like a dissatisfaction like that that tension starts coming back out I'm hearing you. So the weight is coming from you should be further along by now. And you're doing the mindset work of like, well, here's why all of this had to happen this way. But what I heard was it had to happen this way, not I chose everything up until this point. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I I actually want you to do another layer of this same mindset work in your journal or taking a walk and think where I want you to narrate everything up until this point with I chose here's why I chose to stay in hospitality not why I had to because of what my artistic career required why I chose to because I wanted to fuel my artistic career in x y and z specific reasons what's coming up there Um, there is like immediate resistance because I'm like, well, I didn't like, like, did I in action choose it? Yes. Uh Was it all like, okay, barring becoming a server in the last three years since I moved to New York in 2021, I'm chill with, I chose that. 
all of my history prior in hospitality. I think it's like, had I known what I know now, I wouldn't have chosen that. Right. But I didn't know 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 it. Yeah. But I didn't know it. And I felt like this is what everyone else was doing. So it's what they did. It's what I did. let's Let's take that little microcosm of this story and let's piece it apart. It was what everyone else was doing. So I did. If I know what I know now, I wouldn't have done that. I want you to talk through the story as if like put yourself back in how old were you and this part of the story i mean this would have been like uh, oh scrad so like 20 21 to 20 i don't remember if i was 25 or 26 when i moved up sure so let's yeah. talk to 22 year old cameron so in 22 year old cameron's brain you actually weren't thinking this is what everyone else is doing. So I should too. You actually had the thought, this makes so much sense for my career that I do this because I'm seeing other people have success and I want to emulate other artists. Right. And I am an artist. So this is what an artist does. And I'm going to do this. You had such conscious reasons for yeah. choosing that in support of your creative career. Now, looking back on it, you're like, I was just doing what everyone else was doing, but that's not what 22 year old Cameron was thinking. No, right. He chose very intelligently what he wanted to do with the information he had then. Yeah. What's coming up there? God, that made me so emotional. <laughs> yeah, tell me more. <laughs> Uh, I think I'm just like uh, recognizing like there's a pattern of like undercutting like past self. Like once I have new knowledge being like stupid, why didn't you do that before? Like rather than, I don't know that I've ever looked back and thought like as far as, um, and I want to be specific that I'm talking in regard to um, financial choices and employment choices that are outside of artistic career I stand by like all of the artistic choices I've made (laughs) but it's the day you know the day job the whatever the concurrent um employment the stuff that supported the arts I don't think I've ever like looked back and looked back and and given myself like the credit of like I was operating as intelligently as I could with what I had and like I was being strategic and I do think it's true but I don't think I've heard it from certainly not my mouth, but not from anyone's mouth. So like to hear that and like think back on where I was at that time is like very, it like makes me sad that I wasn't able to give myself that credit. Like, so I'm just having like an emotional response to like, Oh, you were like, yeah, good. I'm glad you're having this emotional response because this is where I want you to live. This is what's going to release the weight of that shame. I want you to add to your cashed up manifesto something along the lines of, I make amazing decisions. No matter what information I have, I make the most amazing, intelligent decisions every single time. Um. Ooh, I love that, but I am <laughs> already preparing for the amount of resistance that's going to kick up. Sure. I can feel it happening. And when you start to feel that resistance kick up, you're going to go back to go back to 19 year old Cameron, go back to 24 year old Cameron, go back to like baby Cameron, right? Yeah. Go back to some version of you and actually like put on a different pair of glasses and watch them make it's going to make me emotional watch them make the best decisions for them in whatever experience is like feeling weighty and I want you to look at them through a window and say like wow so great you go you go baby right I see what you're doing right give yourself that credit every time take yourself there when that resistance starts to come up okay Hmm. You might cry a lot. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 
But it's okay. I'm a cancer. I'm used to yeah. crying a lot. <laughs> but, and also crying out of like joy and gratitude <clears throat> and like compassion. I think there's like a compassion cry that is one of the most beautiful therapeutic cries that like you could never have enough of. Right. So just allowing yourself as you're doing this homework, whatever. No. And it doesn't mean you have to cry, but no, when no, 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 no. come yeah. up, right. Like letting yourself feel them all the time, even when it's inconvenient. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Cause I definitely think <laughs> though I'm crying, I don't think right now it's like out of a place of sadness. It's just like, mm. you owe it to yourself to be that. There it is. Compassionate and to be that um, generous. Cause that is a generosity that I like make an effort to extend to people that I love and care about. So like what, hello, why not give that to myself? Yeah. Okay, I'm glad we got here today. Yeah, me too. This I didn't expect horrible. that. <laughs> <laughs> that was not on the bingo card for today. Yeah, but this is what happens when we follow the trail. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Okay. Well, I will talk to you later this afternoon on our call and we're going to come back to, uh, making all of your finances as an actor. I haven't forgotten about that. It's in my notes. Cool. Cool. Okay. Okay. Enjoy right. the rest of your day. I'll see you soon. Thank you. See you this right. evening. Bye. Thanks so much for tuning in. Come join me on Instagram for more on how to build a simple, sexy relationship with your money. My Instagram handle is at not starving artists. And if you want to dive deeper with me, head to the show notes to learn more about one-on-one -on -one coaching. If you love this episode, subscribe, leave a review, and share it with a friend that you want to get rich with.